Bob, I see that we have a, just a multitude of uh, drill bits here. I have drill bits for uh, drilling wood, steel, which is what we refer to as the uh, twist steel drills, high speed steel. They last a long time, resharpenable, probably the most common used drill bit that we have in the shop today. Mm -hmm. The rest of them appear to be more specialized in their application. Most of the other drill bits that we have up here are used primarily for drilling wood. This is a twist drill. The point is changed and we call it a brad point. We have a small center uh, point with two spurs on the edge. Cuts a nice clean hole in the wood. Uh, not quite a flat bottom hole, but uh, very close to it with that little center spur. And they come in a variety of sizes. I have them up to about three quarters of an inch. This is another bit that I've seen quite often. This is a uh, what we generally refer to as a spade bit. It probably goes by a number of different names. It's strictly for cutting wood. It does a rough cut per se because it kind of rips the material apart. You can use those in the portable hand drills and you can use them in a drill press. My observation with these is, is that if you want a perfectly round hole, this is probably not the tool of choice. You want to use something else because it's it's not going to do a real precise job. Right, that would be uh, definitely the case, David. You have some other bits here that look, uh, look very specialized, such as this one here. Okay, David, yeah, and I use a lot of these. This is a Forstner drill bit. I have them in a variety of different sizes. Strictly for wood, they drill a... Uh, a nice flat bottom hole, little different design here than, than this old one. Uh, this has a little longer center spur. Uh, actually, in most of these, there are no center spurs. The drill bit is guided by the outer rim of the cutter itself, allowing you to do some things with this bit that you can't with any other type of drill bit. This bit looks very similar, except it uh, appears to have a almost like a saw blade around the, uh, around the, the cutting edge of the bit. This is what we refer to as the multi-spur bits. It has a center spur, a little different than the Forstner bit, but it has the saw teeth around the edge. Again, strictly for wood, I have one up to three and a half inches in diameter. This bit is a little unusual. That drill bit, David, is a multi-step drill bit or unibit brand name. It's used for drilling uh, sheet metal. You can start by drilling like a one-eighth inch hole, and then as you push the drill in it, you can make any size hole up to about a half inch with that particular one. So these are steps, and so each step that you progress through, then you get a larger hole. And it makes a nice round hole in sheet metal, where a standard twist drill bit uh, often makes a lopsided hole in, in the thin sheet metal. This one is a hole saw. Generally, you can use these in large half-inch drills that turn real slow. You have a saw around the outside. You have a quarter-inch drill bit in the center, which is your pilot drill bit, which uh, keeps everything else in, in line as you drill through. You use them for metal, for wood. If you're installing lock sets and doorknobs on doors, you might use these. Most portable electric reciprocating saws have several basic external features. Usually there is a pistol grip handle, a trigger switch which activates the motor, some sort of housing which covers the motor, an electric cord that supplies power to the motor, and a blade clamp which holds and moves the blade. Okay, Bob, we're going to talk about reciprocating saws. I see we have uh, examples of two models. One looks like it has a little age on it. The other one looks like it's pretty new. These are the reciprocating saws. One is old. Just by looking at the case, I would expect probably early 50s. And a reciprocating saw, the motor pushes the blade out and pulls it back in, cutting on the pull stroke. Where might you use one of these, or for what kinds of things would you use a reciprocating saw? Uh, primarily where I use them is for uh, cutting openings in walls, uh, to put a window or a door, something like that. More or less a remodeling application. I think that, that would be the case where they would be used the most. They do have some other applications because you have a wide variety of blades available for them, all the way from a tree blade 
that you would use uh, for sawing limbs and stuff off mm. of a tree. Well, you we can use it for pruning and, and those types of things. Uh, this one has a, a tungsten carbide uh, grid on the edge, which you could use it for cutting tile and the harder materials okay. like that. You're talking about ceramic tile or uh, saltillo tile? That would be correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And as you'll notice here, we have a short blade on this one, a long blade on that one, kind of a multi-purpose blade. I use those for cutting through walls and doing various things where a long blade is needed. And then we have blades uh, all the way from this uh, fine tooth, straight blades for cutting metal. We have the tapered blades, larger, fewer teeth here for cutting wood. Have blades over here. The whole blade is uh, small all the way along so that you can cut circles easier with it. So there's a wide variety of blades available for the reciprocating problems. And I expect there are craftspeople out there that have used it for many things that I hadn't even thought of. Remember, thousands of injuries occur every year because of the misuse of tools. Here are a few precautions to keep in mind. Never carry a tool by the cord or hose, and never yank the cord or the hose to disconnect it from the receptacle. Keep cords and hoses away from heat, oil, and sharp edges. Disconnect tools when not in use, before servicing, and when changing accessories such as blades, bits, and cutters. All observers should be kept at a safe distance away from the work area. Tools should be maintained with care. They should be kept sharp and clean for the best performance. Be sure to keep good footing and maintain good balance. All portable electric tools that are damaged shall be removed from use and tagged do not use. Electric tools should be operated within their design limitations. Electric tools should not be used in a damp or wet location and when not in use should be stored in a dry place. Work areas should be well lit. That's a wrap.